So a year ago, I did a video about my favorite staff design and shared different ways I found to use it from hiking aid, survival item, and self-defense weapon. And I got lots and lots of questions about how can I make one for myself? Well, in this video, I'll show you just how to make it right from wood selection and sustainable harvest of the wood, all the way through the shaping and making process. And finally, I discussed different ways that you can optimize and customize your staff to suit your needs. So stay tuned and let's get started. Hi folks, Tom from Pan Dabby Dozy, thanks for tuning in. So if you haven't seen my first video on the staff, I would go watch that first so this video makes more sense and you understand the design I'm going for. I'll put a link to that in the description below. Now, you could pick up any old straightish stick that's strong enough to support your weight and use that as a hiking aid, but with a little bit more time and a little bit more effort, you can make yourself a really beautiful staff that's very strong, is multi-purpose, you can use it for martial arts and will be a trusty adventure companion for many, many years. So when it comes down to wood selection, you could talk for hours about all the different qualities that different trees offer. Um, so just see what trees are in your area and get to know them. I also like to learn about the different mythologies behind trees as it gives your staff a bit more character. So I'll put some links to some useful resources in the video description so you can learn some more about that. Now winter is generally the best time to harvest wood so the sap is not flowing to the tree meaning there's less moisture in the wood so it will dry faster and there's less of a chance of the tree bleeding out. Now where I am right now I'm looking for a good stave of hazel which is call or colton in Gaelic. Now hazel is a fantastic wood for making walking staffs for a few reasons. You can find it growing naturally, very straight, it's strong and lightweight and it also coppices very well. This means that as long as you don't take too much from the tree, more shoots will grow back from it. However, if you're mainly wanting your staff for martial art purposes, I would go for something a bit denser, something like ash or oak. Now I want my finished staff to be about up to my chin in length and about one and a half inches in thickness all the way along. So I'm looking for a stave as straight as possible and cutting it a bit longer and thicker than the finished design to leave room for error. Make your saw cut at an angle to reduce the chance of infection getting into the tree. And the wood is easiest to carve when it's still green like this so I would do the majority of the carving now to get close to your desired thickness but still leave plenty of room for error before you dry the wood. Now there's lots of different opinions on how and how long to dry or season your wood to get the best strength and to avoid it cracking. But uh, I just dried mine at room temperature for about a week. Now I did find a couple of small cracks in the end, but that's why I harvested the stave longer than what I needed so I can trim these bits off. Now the wood is dried, you will notice it's harder to carve. So make sure your knife is nice and sharp and just take your time. Remember, you can never add the wood back on that you've taken off. So just find somewhere comfy and enjoy the process. And just keep checking the staff after every few shavings just to check for a consistent thickness. So now it's time to smooth out any knife marks on the staff. I'm using sandpaper starting at 120 grit, moving to 400 and then finishing with 800. But if you're out in the bush and didn't have this, then you could use different rocks. You could use sand on a piece of leather. Or in the past, people used skins from sharks and rays. So the staff is almost ready. I've rounded off the ends on both sides. This is uh, going to help stop the staff from splitting. I do usually um, dedicate one end of the staff for the ground, that's the one that's always going to get muddy and a bit worn, and one side of the staff that's facing upwards. And here you know you can carve or burn designs in, whatever you want, 
Uh, you can use it as a diary, like my story stick. I'll put a link to that video in the description below. And in terms of how smooth you make staff is entirely up to you. You know, the reason why I design my staff so that they're the same width all the way along and the reason why I like them quite smooth is because I'm, I'm always sliding the staff through my hand as I'm walking, as I'm um, adjusting for the terrain. Um, and you know, I just, that's the, the way I like them. And also in terms of a, a martial perspective, um, there's lots of moves that requires you to be able to slide the, the staff quickly through your hands. There's lots of strikes and cuts and uh, you know, you don't want to um, have sort of knots in the stick or anywhere that you might get a splinter. Um, but you don't need to make it so silky smooth that you know, it's going to slip out your hand. So somewhere in between. So you could use the staff just as it is right now. Uh, you know, finish it off with oil and it'll be ready to go. Uh, but you know, the longer that you use it, and especially if you're walking on hard terrain like rocks or roads, there is a risk that the end of the staff might start to split. So the ideal thing to stop this would be some sort of metal cap. Uh, but you could, you know, you know, use a bit of copper pipe or something. Just something that's going to um, stop the, the fibres of the wood from expanding. But what I'll show you now is a sort of backpacker solution to this problem, uh, which is basically just using cord to um, to lash and bind uh, the both ends to stop the stick from splitting over time. And uh, you know this is what I did on my original staff, and I've been using it for nearly two years. Pretty hard use, and it is pr you know getting pretty worn on one end, uh, but the the lashing is still holding up after two years. Um, so, right, so stay tuned and I'll show you how to do that. About an inch from the end, cut a shallow groove all the way around and smooth it out. This will allow your lashing to sit tightly in place and flush with the rest of the staff. I'm using a synthetic bank line, but you could do something similar. But the pros of using a synthetic cord is that you can melt the ends a little to, to stop them coming undone. So there's the bind finished on both ends of the staff. Now you could just do the bind on the end of the staff that you're dedicating to the ground, but I quite like keep it symmetrical and also the notch at the top of the staff is useful for attaching your guy line to prop up your tarp and also to attach your staff sling. Now the best thing to do after this to stop your, your lashing come undone is to coat it with some sort of glue, uh, epoxy resin works really well or varnish. Uh, if you didn't have that then you could make some pine pitch glue out in the woods and you basically coat that over the the lashing so that it becomes one solid band. Finally it just needs a few coats of oil, uh, linseed oil would be best but you know you could use walnut oil, um, even something like olive oil you could use, you just might need to apply it more often than other types of oils. So after a few coats of oil there is the finished staff. Now uh, the oil not only helps protect the wood, stops water from getting in, it also hardens it, it sort of binds together the fibres of the wood. Um, so it's turned out pretty nice, uh, maybe a wee bit thinner than I initially intended. Uh, I've also come up with some other ideas of how I would optimise it and perfect it if I had all the time and all the resources in the world. Uh, and I'll discuss those ideas later, maybe you guys can share your ideas too. But uh, before that, let's take it for a spin, let's test it out. So, all in all, pretty happy with it. 
Uh, but I've come up with some different ways I could optimize it and really make it my personal sort of perfect staff. I would probably stain the wood a darker color so it's not so uh, eye-catching. Um, also for the bottom of the staff, I would love to, to find a, a metal cap with a spike uh, to, give me, to give me grip when walking on hard surfaces and walking on ice. Um, I haven't managed to find anything like that on the internet, but if anyone has any ideas, please share them. And for the top of the staff, normally I would do some sort of decorative designs. Um, obviously this notch is where I can attach my uh, staff sling. Another idea I really want to do is come up with some sort of thread or socket attachment system that I could attach, you know, for example, a spearhead for hunting, um, a harpoon head for fishing, but basically anything you wanted. Um, now, I'm sure it's been done before and please share any ideas you've got. I hope this video inspired you to go and make your own personal ultimate staff. Uh, please share pictures of your finished staffs at my Instagram. I'll put a link to that in the description below. You know, for me, for, for such a, a simple and easy tool to make, you really cover a lot of ground of knowledge. You, you better understand your, your local trees and environment. You get to learn about different wood properties, some very, very basic woodworking skills. And finally, the, the martial arts side of it, it might not interest everyone, but I find it fascinating that there's, there's literally hundreds of stick martial arts from all around the world, from all the different cultures. So let me know if you want to see any more videos on staff. I've got literally hundreds of ideas from optimizing the staff sling to different ways of using it for martial arts, different ways of using it for fitness, uh, and always finding new ways in terms of bushcraft survival aspect. So uh, let me know if you want to see more. And uh, huge thanks to all my patrons and supporters for helping keep the channel going. And uh, Hope you have a good day and I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Cheers folks.